Hey everybody, Patton here, welcome back. Today we're gonna to look at playing Dreamcast games on the PlayStation Classic. Before we get started, I need to let you know that this is probably closer to a proof of concept than an actual working way of playing Dreamcast games. The PlayStation Classic just doesn't have the hardware needed to run these games very well at all. There's a couple 2D games that may run pretty good for you, but overall this is not a viable system to play these games with. So let's get started. First step is to prepare your external storage. We're going to be using this flash drive here. You're going to right click the drive, go down to format. Make sure the file system is set to FAT32 and the volume label is Sony in all caps. If you're using a larger drive, you may not be able to do this in Windows. I'll put a program in my description called GUI Format you can use to format a larger drive to FAT32. Once your drive is formatted and named correctly, you're going to open up the newest version of AutoBleam 0.7.1 Ultimate. You're going to take everything in that folder, right click and copy, and then paste them just like this on the root of your flash drive. When you go to add your games, you want to put them in this ROMs folder, not the games folder. The games folder is only for PS1 games. I'm going to go into the ROMs folder and then I'm going to create another directory. I like to keep my systems separated by folder. So I'm going to create a Dreamcast folder. And in this folder is where I'm going to keep my games. The two games we're going to take a look at today are right here. Capcom vs SNK Millennium Fight 2000 and Illbleed. The best game on the Dreamcast. I'm going to highlight both games, right click and copy and paste them here into the Dreamcast folder that I made. Running Dreamcast games also require BIOS files and they're added a little bit differently than other BIOS files. Your BIOS files are going to go into this RetroArch folder and down here in the System folder. These are the two BIOS files that you're going to use, dc underscore boot.bin and dc underscore flash.bin. They have to be named exactly like this with the same lowercase letters. You'll notice these BIOS files are in a DC folder. They have to be added in that DC folder. I'm going to take this DC folder with my two BIOS files and then drag it into the system folder. So the BIOS files go into RetroArch, System, DC, and they're right here. I wasn't able to get a playlist working for the Dreamcast game so I can't show you all the other steps to get them running from the AutoBleam menu, but I'll do some digging and I'll see if I can get it figured out and once I do, I'll let you guys know. The last thing we have to do is safely remove the flash drive, plug it into the PlayStation Classic. So I'll meet you over there. So here we are in the auto bleam menu. We're gonna hit the square button to go into RetroArch. Normally at this part in the video, I would show you how to make the playlist, but I couldn't get that working. To play your games, just go to the load content option and then hit X on start directory. And you'll see that the folder that we created is right here. And within that folder are the two games. We're gonna start out with Illbleed. And once you select your game, it's gonna ask what core you wanna use. I always go for the KM cores, although when I was testing these, it seemed like they ran pretty good with both cores. But I do know that KM FD Manic likes to make little tweaks to make games run better, so I always go with his. So we're going to select KM Raycast. So here we go, Illbleed started up just fine. We're going to hit start to get into a new game. You can see the screen is shrunk a little bit, and that's because you kind of have to lower the resolution or the screen size to get these to run anywhere near playable. So here's how the game sounds. Even if you're not familiar with the game, you can probably tell that's not how it's supposed to sound. Also, I can't move anywhere. If I hit the buttons on the D-pad, it just changes the cameras, which is what the D-pad on the Dreamcast controller would do with this game. So you'll have to map the analog stick to the D-pad. To do that, hit start and select on the controller. Go back one screen over to settings and then down to input. Push up on this next screen to go to the bottom of the list and we're looking for user one binds. We need to scroll down to the analog options and here it is right here, left analog, right, left, down and up. So this is where we're going to change the input. You're gonna hit X on the option, then you're gonna hold whatever direction it's asking for. It says right, so hold right on the D-pad. And you can see over on the right, it's been assigned. We're gonna do that with the rest of these options here. So now all analog directions have been mapped to the D-pad. Unfortunately, since Illbleed is a game that also uses the D-pad, it's gonna kind of mess up your game a little bit. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So if I move up, you'll see it's also going to change the camera angle, but we can move now. Normally, I can fix this in the RetroArch menu, but for some reason I couldn't unbind the actual D-pad controls 
for this game. It's more than likely user error on my part, but it's something to look out for just in case you do have a game you want to play that has both analog and d-pad controls. But you can tell here that this game isn't playable anyway, it is running way too slow, and unfortunately the majority of Dreamcast games you try out are going to play like this. So let's try out a different game, a 2D fighter game, Capcom vs SNK Millennium Fight 2000. Once again, We'll start it up with KM Raycast. So already this game sounds a lot better than Illbully did. I don't hear any skipping in the menu, but again, that's just the menu. And for some reason on this screen, I believe you're supposed to be able to see the characters you've chosen. They're not there. I'm going to play a little bit of the match just so you can hear how everything sounds. And that's all I got for you guys. So as you can see, not the best way to play Dreamcast games, but you may find one or two that play really well. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you next time. This is the part of the video where I thank those users who support the channel through Patreon. Eric Colon, Mike Muniz, Sam Torres, William Wend, Yaroslav Oruzov.